In this video, we're gonna go over how to set up the water chiller for the pod company. Feel free to pause the video whenever you need or check out the chiller manual for a step-by-step -step process. First, you need to make sure that your ice pod is set up on a flat surface that can hold up to 700 pounds. We want access to a GFCI outlet, which is a regular 110 volt US plug, but with a third hole for the ground pin. If you live outside the US, just make sure you're using the chiller with the original power cord. If unsure, please reach out for support. The chiller comes with a nine foot power cable. So anything over that, you're gonna need an extension cable. We wanna make sure that there's about 15 inches around the water chiller for proper airflow. And lastly, make sure that the ice pod and the water chiller are about five feet away from any other appliances for safety. Included with the water chiller is the following. One water chiller unit, one power cable, one water filter and pump unit, various hose connectors, extra seal rings, and a white Teflon seal tape. One short hose, two long hoses, hose insulation, one manual. Step two, for the chiller and water circulation to work properly, it always needs to be on the ground at the same level as the ice bath. It is also important to note that the water level in your tub should be higher than the top of the filter on your chiller. Before setting up the water chiller, let it sit for two to three hours in an upright position before connecting to power right after transport. Failing to do so may result in a chiller malfunction. Step three, unbox the chiller and place it on the valve connector side of your ice bath. Place the filter and the pump unit on the side of the chiller. Finally, plug the pump power cable into the back of the water chiller. Step four, make sure to place the white rubber rings on top of the blue chiller outlets first. Mount the two hose connectors on the inlet and outlet on top of the water chiller and then screw the connectors on. Step five, connect the shorter hose to the pump adapter gently so you don't break it and slide the short hose insulation piece onto it connect the other end to one of the chiller connectors it doesn't matter which one step six add the hose insulation to the two long hoses carefully press the first long hose onto the water filter connect the second long hose to the remaining outlet on the chiller step seven attach the hose attached to the filter to the bottom of the valve of the ice bath using the connector as shown below attach the outlet hose connected to the chiller to the top valve of the ice bath step eight if you haven't already now is the time to fill your ice bath with water just make sure the valves are in the closed position Double check that all the seals and hose connections are secure. Should any connections leak, please check all the seal rings are used. And otherwise, use the white Teflon tape that came with your chiller to fix the leaks. Step nine, please pay extra attention to this step. Doing this step incorrectly can cause air to be trapped inside the system, which results in water not circulating into your ice bath. First, make sure that the water level in your ice bath is above the height of the filter in the chiller. It's important that you open both valves on the ice pod if you have the two valve version, or just the one if you have the one valve ice pod. Next, open the smaller air release valve on the filter, which will release release excess air so the water can flow into the pump and chiller. Close the filter air valve once water is running out of it or the filter is full. Now please also note that the water levels inside the filter will fall when the chiller is turned on. This is normal, you can rest assured the water is being filtered. Step 10, connect the chiller's main power supply cord to the 110 volt GFCI outlet. Turn the chiller on using the red switch on the back. Please note the chiller and the pump will now turn on and water will start to flow. Now confirm that the water is circulating by feeling seeing if water is coming out of the outlet hose or top ice pod valve. Step 11, once your water is circulating you can now set up your desired temperature press the set button adjust the temperature up or down using the arrow buttons to your desired temperature press the RST button once to save the setting the chiller will now show the current water temperature and will begin cooling down to the set temperature you should hear the chillers compressor start after around two to five minutes it can take anywhere from six to sixteen hours for the water to reach desired temperature after a water change it all depends on the climate and tap water's initial temperature the chiller is designed to be on 24 7 and will maintain the set water temperature and continuously filter the water step 12. Your ice bath is ready to go. To keep your water clean and chiller working well long term, please purchase the maintenance package with replacement filters and water sanitizer. How to empty the ice pod. You can either use a bucket, the three foot drain that comes with the ice pod, or a nine foot drain hose that we also sell. Maintenance protocols. Number one, turn off your chiller and close both valves of the ice pod. Number two, loosen the transparent filter housing by screwing it anti-clockwise. Number three, take the filter cartridge out and rinse it with a water and brush. Or even better, spray it with a water hose to get the dirt out. Change your filter once every month. Number four, hand tighten the transparent filter housing back on. Number five, follow steps nine and 10 from the setup instructions to start the chiller again and ensure circulation. Changing your water once every one to two months when using water sanitizer or as needed. You need to be your own judge for this. Change the water when it looks dirty or when it has algae or scum build up for the ice bath. It's essential to use water sanitizer in your water, otherwise the water will only last one to two weeks. If you'd like to limit the chiller's electricity consumption, you can use the ultra insulated cover set. This can help make the chiller go to lower temperatures in hot climates and overall allowing the chiller to do less work. If you're like me and want to take your plunging to the next level, you can check out the water circulation jet. It makes the water feel colder with water rapidly flowing, ultimately saving chiller electricity and requiring less temperature for the same cold therapy effects. We have F1 and F2 settings, which we will attach a link to the guide that explains these settings in detail. Should you have an issue with the chiller not cooling or the temperatures not going as low as expected. Here I'll briefly point out the warranty and disclaimers for the ice pod. 